All right, so you've come from OBS Studio. Obviously, you must have watched Harris Heller's video on Mel Studio and him switching from OBS. So now you're here and you're wondering, okay, so how do I get started? Well, I wanted to let you know about three things you need to know about when getting started with Mel Studio if you're coming over from OBS. Number one, Mel Studio is still in beta. Okay, so there's some things that you may discover are game breaking, which crashes the software, does whatnot. This is a beta, okay? This is not the final version. So what I recommend you do is if you're going to use this and you're going to try some things, may not work and meld, and it crashes, you need to let the developers know that. Best way to do that is by getting on their Discord, okay? Join their Discord, I'll provide a link down below where you can join the meld Discord. And you will get the best response there. Very quick, they're very easy to get a hold of, and they will address the issue. They'll try to replicate it if possible, and then they will provide a fix. The great thing about Melt Studio is that every two weeks, you get an update. The right, second thing you're gonna to wanna to know about with Melt Studio when you're coming from OBS is some of the layout. So let's talk about the layout, and I think you'll find that this is actually a lot better. One of the main reasons that Melt Studio is so much better than OBS, in my opinion, is the user experience. The user interface, the user experience is far and beyond better than OBS. So let's talk about that. Okay, so the first thing we'll talk about uh, is the area to the left here. This is your area where you're gonna have your scenes and sources if you're coming from OBS, but there's a name, uh, nomenclature is a little different. The convention here they use is called layers instead of sources. Scenes is the same and operates the same. But if you're looking for sources, they're going to be called layers, which makes sense because within your canvas here, you're layering your different sources you want to have. So you're building layers. So that's why they did that. And I think it makes sense and I like it. But within that layers, if you click plus sign, you can see what you have available, including widgets here at the bottom, which is something new that they added yesterday in the latest update. I've yet personally to try this, uh, but there is a great video that they made explaining what these are and how they work. And obviously, if you watched Harris's video, then he gave an explanation also. Because he helped design. So there you go. Other than that, you have video devices, that's your cameras, webcams, virtual webcams, that sort of thing. Display capture, your screens that you want to show. Media sources is your video files. Uh, VLC, that sort of thing. I'm not sure if that works here yet. Uh, images, if you want to show photos or you have browser, which are your browser source, or if you're using something like Stream Elements or Streamlabs for widgets, this will be how you bring in alerts. Uh, your duplicator is basically like it says, you're duplicating a scene or a source. This is where you would do nested scenes. That is a recent update also, that if you use nested scenes, which I highly recommend you do, uh, this is where you would do it. You also have text. You have this thing called Markdown. I personally have not used that, so I don't really know much about it. Uh, you have Red Tangle. This is basically what you're actually seeing in the scene right now. You, you see this gradient at the bottom. Uh, this is just something that I've done to fill in, but you can use Red Tangles for all kinds of things, including borders for webcams, that sort of stuff. It's really actually pretty uh, ingenious when you add uh, Red Tangle and you add all the effects and different things that you can do with it. These are your different sources that you currently have available. Likewise, you have all of your scenes down here that you can do things like you can rename, you can duplicate, you can delete. Here, you can, uh, for each of your individual layers here, you can fit, you can stretch, you can reset, transform, you can flip and you can delete. Obviously, you can see that there. Another thing that's really nice about these uh, cam sources, uh, let me go down here and I'll show you, for instance, on vertical cam, Right here, this source, it gives you options automatically right here where you can crop and you can do certain things. So here I've got this uh, built-in border uh, that is set that you can go in, you got the reset transform there, but you can, if you want to crop this, it gives you cropping automatically. Uh, you have the ability to resize, to add uh, borders, that sort of thing really nice little feature that they've added to this that you can do and that, and this is an example of an asset scene that i'm currently using obviously you've seen i've changed it here so if i go back to the uh vertical cam scene that i've made then i go and i select this then go back into my scene you can see that that has translated over to this scene which is why i like using that scenes a lot 
And then I've got this other scene where it automatically moves my cam over to the left. If I want to talk about the stuff on the right, which is what we're getting ready to do. So on the right, you have outputs here. And one of the great things about Mild Studio compared to OBS Studio, this has built-in multi-stream. No third-party plugins, no ATEM. You don't need any of that. Everything's right here. Currently, Twitch and YouTube have uh, API access so you can log into your accounts and log in there. And then the widgets will then react to any of your alerts that they added in yesterday, which is nice. Over on the right, this is also what's called the inspector. Okay, if you want to look at the inspector, uh, then you just click on this arrow and it moves it over. And here's where you have all of your different settings, your transform settings, all your presets, all your different effects that you can add in layers. And here they all are here that you have available that you can choose inside of uh, Meld Studio, which is really nice. They've added all this in again. No third party plugins, no super clicks, three or four clicks to get to it. It's all right here on the front. So it's really nice and super easy to understand. Uh, I love the drop shadow, for instance, is one of my big ones. And the blur is another one that I use a lot. So definitely worth giving those a shot if you want to add some extra effects to your cameras and to your scenes, which is really cool. Audio is down here at the bottom. And again, unlike OBS Studio, everything is quite easy to get to and easy to understand. Obviously, if you want to add a track, you can, and it just adds it. Uh, you, to select a device, you have three options. You got input devices, output devices, and processes. These are applications. So if you have Spotify and you want to have a Spotify track, well, you just choose, choose spot, uh, process sources and you get you select Spotify and you got it. This is what this current track right here is. Um, I can go and I can rename this track if I wanted to. And you have a dedicated track uh, that you can also exclude from your VOD just by going to the edit and selecting this little button to exclude this track from the VOD track. You also have, have the ability to do mono. These are the things that would be under advanced audio settings in OBS that you would have to do a couple clicks to get to. Here, it's all on one click. Likewise, if you just want to monitor the track, again, it's all on the top layer right here. You just click this Q, the button will turn blue, and this will send monitor audio to whatever you have designated as your monitor audio output that you can listen to on your headphones. And all that is done under preferences. Right here under audio, I have uh, this track going to my roadcaster that I have as my audio thing also this is where you would uh, tell it where you have your vsts that you want to use because guess what you have vst capability right here inside of mill studio uh really awesome all of your settings for meld studio are all under this single preferences selection so if you want to change your uh encoder settings for if you want to change your encoder settings for instance well they're all right here in this setting uh, that you can go in and choose things like bit rate, your canvas resolution, uh, your frame rate, uh, your uh, destination for recording videos. If you want to do uh, clipping, this has the ability to enable clips where you can do clips for uh, short VOD tracks, that sort of thing. If you find something that is really exciting in your stream, you have that available right here and you can choose the destination. Really cool. All right, last thing you need to know about Meld Studio if you're moving from OBS or you want to move from OBS, all right, this is an important one because OBS has been around for a long time. There's a lot of things that OBS can do with plugins that have been built over, oh gosh, I don't know, like the last 10 years plus, I would say now. Meld Studio is brand new. So there may be some functionality that you need that Meld Studio does not do. One of those being that's very popular right now on my channel as of yesterday is NDI. Okay, NDI is not currently supported in Meld Studio, but it will be. Again, this is a beta. Okay, so they're adding features in, testing them, and making sure they work fine. NDI is on the roadmap. It will be coming, trust me. But in the meantime, if you want to use NDI, you have to use a third party plugin or a third party app called Webcam. Okay, and you can get that through the NDI tools, go to NDI's website. Download the NDI tools, they're free for Windows, free for Mac. And if you're on Windows, the NDI webcam app will give you four NDI sources that you can use inside of Meld Studio. I have a video that shows you how to do that. 
for Mac. The only option, which I just learned yesterday, was called virtual input, and it does give you one input for NDI that you can input into Meld Studio. Fingers crossed, though, the NDI will be native inside of Meld Studio here real soon. Please. Other than that, though, Melt Studio is very comprehensive and pretty much does everything you need it to do. And you'd be surprised at how awesome your stream looks. Uh, it really does a good job, especially have, if you have the new NVENC. The hardware encoding currently only supports NVENC. That's another thing you need to know about if you're an AMD or Intel GPU user. The only option that you have for encoding right now is X264. But if you're an NVIDIA card user and you have an RTX card, or a, a relatively newer GTX card, then you do have NVENC available as hardware encoding, which you should be able to have nice crispy frames and nice crispy resolution. As a matter of fact, I have tested a 4K 30 stream using Meld Studio and the NVENC, and hey, it worked really good. So if you are interested in Meld Studio, please, you want to subscribe to this channel. I already have six other videos in a playlist that you can learn about Meld Studio and everything you need to know, including setting up your stream for the first time. So if you're interested in that, you definitely want to subscribe to this channel. Keep an eye out for more videos as they come live because I will be making exclusive Meld Studio videos for you to know about, including things like how to use nested scenes and different ways that you can do that. Uh, all your different ways that you can use audio, VSTs, it's gonna be right here on this channel. So make sure you uh, subscribe. And if you like this video, make sure you hit the like, I would appreciate it. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Have a great day. See you later.